Hi, Stephen from Own or Disown. Now my last video showed how the Dell G5 with an RTX 2060 compared to the 2070 Max-Q in the, my Dell G7, you know, both with one stick of uh, 16 gigabytes of RAM, how they performed. Now if you missed that, you know, click up here for that video. And it was a shock to a lot of people that the cheaper 2060 model beat the 2070 Max-Q. Now, although both GPUs are bottlenecked with single channel RAM, it certainly affects more powerful GPUs more. So you could bear that in mind when you're doing your purchase. Now, some laptops are easier to upgrade than others. Unfortunately, you know, Dell is very good here with the G series. It's very easy to open up and add more RAM. So in this video, I added two sticks of 8 gigabyte DDR4, 2,666 megahertz, and I tested 11 games, all using max performance profile. So let's take a look. Now both the 2060 and the 2070 Max Q pull you know, up to about 85 watts. The 2060 at stock can boost up to about uh, 1890 megahertz and the 2070 Max Q up to about 1800 megahertz. Assassin's Creed benefits the most from dual channel RAM and it allows the CPU to boost higher and feed the GPU nicely. The CPU on the G7 actually boosts higher and is pulling more watts but the 2060 does boost slightly more. Now both GPUs perform pretty similarly though. Now I used the inbuilt benchmark to test the frame rates and they both average about 60 FPS. But the big benefit here is the 2070 Max-Q has a higher minimum frame rate. In Battlefield 1 DX12 Ultra settings, using the 125% scaling, the 2060 does generally clock higher to partially offset the extra 20% shaders that the 2070 Max-Q has. As a result, the 2070 Max-Q is only 8% faster than the 2060, which in turn is 26% cheaper. Now, Battlefield 5 DX12 using ray tracing at ultra settings. This is a 64-player multiplayer map uh, using Rotterdam, and there's loads of action and loads of reflections. The CPU in the G7 is getting more utilized, helping with all the explosions and physics effects. So we actually see a 28% boost in average frame rate and more importantly, an increase of 50% in minimum frame rate. However, I still recommend using medium settings to reduce those dips though. Now in Far Cry 5 using ultra settings, both cards play it very well and there's not a huge difference between them to be honest. The CPU does seem to boost more on the G7. Now again, I use the inbuilt benchmark tool and we see that there is 11% improvement with the 2070 Max-Q. Not a huge amount at all. So in Fortnite Epic settings, we see that the 2060 does boost more than the 2070 Max-Q, but not enough to offset the extra 20% shaders that the, Max, uh, the 2070 Max-Q has. It's good to see the CPU maintaining a high boost clock though. We see a 16% advantage on average frame rate for the 2070 Max-Q, but a nice 35% improvement in minimum frame rates. Still, you don't need a 2070 Max-Q to play this game with decent frame rates. In Overwatch using Epic settings, we don't see a whole lot of difference between the two cards. If you are seeking high frame rates, both these cards will serve you well. And indeed, using fraps to measure the averages and the minimums, we see a very close performance. Certainly, there's no need to spend any extra money if you play this a lot. Rainbow Six Siege Ultra settings, both cards perform above 140 FPS, so it's perfectly fine for the 144 Hz panel that is available. Using the inbuilt benchmark, we only see a 6% advantage for the 2070 Max-Q, so the 2060 is perfectly fine for this game as well. Now, PUBG Ultra settings on the Vikendi map. Both GPUs perform well. The 2070 Max-Q does perform faster, you know, in line with its 20% extra shaders. Using fraps to record the frame rates, we see that the 2070 Max-Q is indeed about 20% faster than the 2060. Switching to Rise of the Tomb Raider, DX12, very high settings, the 2060 does boost up slightly higher, whilst the CPU on the G7 seems to hold higher clocks. Still, there isn't an earth-shattering difference in frame rate. And indeed, using the inbuilt benchmark, we see a 16% improvement for the 2070 Max-Q. And let's face it, 83 FPS versus 96 FPS isn't going to make or break your gaming experience here. Finally, Shadow of the Tomb Raider using DX12 higher settings. Both cards get over 60 FPS and the game is more than playable. Sure, the 2070 Max-Q is slightly faster, but not by a whole lot. So using the inbuilt benchmark, we see that the 2070 Max-Q is 12% faster than the 2060. So averaging out all of the games, 
the 2070 Max-Q is about 10% faster, you know, an average frame rate and 19% faster in minimum frame rates. Now with the 2070 Max-Q being 26% 26 more expensive than then that perhaps uh, the increase in the minimum frame rate will be more worthwhile to you. You know, perhaps making it more future-proof. But, you know, in my opinion, an extra $500 is a lot to ask for. This 2060 is more than capable in non-ray tracing games, and even with ray tracing, you can get a decent experience with uh, when you drop down to medium settings, which, to be fair, you need to do with the 2070 Max-Q anyway, certainly in Battlefield 5. So I'm, my recommendation is to stick with the 2060 and use the money that you save to get a dual channel RAM and upgrade your storage. Right, well, thank you for watching. Remember, subscribe, like, and I'll see you next time. Bye.